Hey there guys, welcome back to another YouTube video. Now I normally, I know, normally this isn't the setting I choose for my videos, but right now it's a ruckus inside of that house. So, and my room's lighting isn't good, and the lighting out here isn't great either, but it's a lot better. Today we're going to be looking at their first 4G capable smartphone. Now there is a lot of misconception about this. A lot of people will say the iPhone 4 was the first 4G phone that actually is not true. It is the Evo, sorry, excuse me, it is the HTC Evo 4G. This thing is like a relic. It is using Android 2.3.5, which is ancient. What's so crazy is that 4G was rolled out, kind of like how 5G is, nobody really has it. Um, 2010, all right? That's when this phone right here was released. This phone right here is barely able to pick up a signal. Also, this thing did not have developer mode at this time. Now, I did go ahead and download some apps. You know the funny part is, is if I had my iPhone SE out here, um, I would have no signal for Wi-Fi. This thing actually outdoes my iPhone. That's kind of sad. It is still capable of making a Google account, and I created a new one on this device. It was actually pretty simple, shockingly. Um, yeah. And it can only download five apps off the App Store. The App Store does work, but only five apps will show up. It's really weird. I don't even. I didn't even expect it to work. Facebook, which is a 2011 version of the app, which actually still works. I was able to log in my account. And what's so funny is that I actually had two-step turned on in my account. And guess what? It didn't even ask. So I was still able to log in without two-step, which is not good. So pretty much a hacker can just go on an older version of Facebook and pretty much get in your account. That's not good. Please enable my location source and system settings. Okay, here's the interesting thing. They have toggles for whenever you want to do this. A lot of phones don't have stuff like this. I actually kind of like that touch. It's like a privacy thing. I actually really enjoyed that. Um, I really wish a lot of things still did that now, but you know, a lot of them don't. So that's interesting. Let's see, does matter? There's, there's all kinds of them. There was Street View, Local, which made no sense, and then all kinds of other stuff. Waiting for location. It looks like it's having a hard time finding me. What's so funny is that this is actual GPS, so this is not based off Wi-Fi. A lot of phones don't even have GPS anymore. Depending on how expensive your phone is, your phone might not actually have GPS, and it might not, and it only, okay, okay. Most phones only use GPS from your Wi-Fi or your data. Most of them don't actually have a GPS in it, or at least they don't let you use it. But this one right here, actually has a GPS in it and it sucks <laughs> as you can see it cannot find my location which I'm connected to Wi-Fi and I have that so that's pretty bad oh look at that oh it was actually able to get my location without internet all right I am connected to Wi-Fi so let's see what happens if I turn off that Wi-Fi will it still be able to find me now some phones will actually still be able to. Wait a minute. Holy crap, I didn't actually expect that to work. It actually still has my location. Without Wi-Fi or any form of internet, it is still able to get location. I'm jealous because my iPhone can't do that. So that's something from the early 2000s. Not really early, but 10 years ago, phones actually had GPS chips that you can use without internet. Nowadays you can't, which is a bummer. Got Netflix. Here's the interesting thing. Netflix still updates their apps all the way up to Android 1.3, which makes no sense to me. Like, like this is the latest version of the Netflix app right now, uh, and it, it crashes, but I was able to get it to work, and I was watching Netflix on this thing. This is the 2020 version of the app, and it was actually available on this Play Store, which only has like five apps on it. This thing is really a relic. Now, I'll show you what it looked like on the App Store. It is a very interesting experience. I'm just joking, it is hot garbage. As you would expect from a 10 year old device. 
so that is to be expected. Google Translate. See, what's so funny is that every time I open this thing, more apps will show showing up. Everything has been up to date as well. See, it was only allowing me to uh, download Gmail, Facebook Lite, which is interesting. Netflix. If I actually click on the page, it tells me the last time it was updated for this device. Would you look at that? They still support older versions of devices. Thank you, Netflix. It looks like you care. Subway Surfers. That sounds about right. I am connected to the Wi-Fi. Subway Surfers game. Oh yeah. <laughs> I should have known the actual game. Wait, piano tiles. It works on this phone? You see, what's so funny is that if you actually look at the apps page, you can't download, it won't show you every app unless you search for something. Like if I just click apps, like look, it just goes, it just does this. Enough of the app store. Let's go on to something else. Now, if I were to go to use Opera Mini and try to pull up YouTube, all it does is download a YouTube video, which is interesting because how does that work? So every time I try to pull up a video, and half the time it won't even pull up because it knows I'm on Android 2.2 or 2.3. As you guys can see, it also downloads the ads. Now, I don't know what the reason for this is on why it can't, it just downloads it and how. But that's very interesting. Um, <laughs> um, okay, so that's, what, oh, okay. So that's what happens when you try and play that. Now, I did pull up a Sniper, a sniper Wolf video and all it did was download it, but it seems like it deleted it. So that's interesting. We also get to see the camera. Now, I like the Windows phone I got over here. This thing is, has better specs than this one, except this one has more RAM, but the camera on this one is supposed to be better on paper, but we'll see. Also, something I really miss on older versions of Android, you see this thing called app sharing. Anyway, there's this thing called app sharing, and it's pretty cool. You can actually share APK. It turns it into an APK and send it to another phone, which is... I really wish new phones had that, because they don't. What's so funny is that they have set up as an actual app. Isn't that just insane? Which kind of would be annoying after a while. Yeah, this thing is pretty much not cool. What I never understood is, I deleted, look, like, there's news and then news and weather. Like, what? All right, let's talk about storage. This thing only had about 500 megabytes of internal storage. God. Um, I have most of the apps on my SD card, but that's so bad. That's why this thing was so slow when I first turned it on. System updates. Can I still download an update for this thing? No. I think I actually did earlier. I think that's why I was able to use the app store. But look, it's just all grayed out. And I am connected to Wi-Fi, as you can see. So, it is pretty useless. But that doesn't mean you can't actually use it for anything. I'm actually going to be using it as a MP3 player. <laughs> uh, anyway, if we go to About, you can see a lot more like software. The kernel version is on 2.6.35.10. See, it's been through a lot. Um, I don't care about leaking the IMEI and everything on this because I don't, I'm not using the phone. The battery level, uh, the battery on this thing is god awful. Like, this thing is pretty bad. Like, the battery, actually, when I got it, was already kind of expanded, so that's bad. But the battery life on these phones are very bad. Like, they don't last. And that could be because they're old, but I'm not going to actually hold it against the battery because it's probably because it's old. Guys. 2010 version with YouTube, which does not work. It will just say I have to update it. Then when I go on the page, it will say your version. It does not support anymore. So that sucks. It's local. I think this app, I think you can still download this off the app store. I mean, I don't know why you would because now it's built in to Google Maps. Used to, they never had that. They had a separate app like this until they all made it into one. Okay, that was not an accurate 
Okay, that I'm not. I'm. This is a very inaccurate location. But whatever, weather still works. Most of the stuff on this phone still works. Even voice search. Why did Hannah Montana suck? I stand corrected. <laughs> HTC was a brand that just was very innovative at the time. And it really does suck that it couldn't last. Ah, uh, well, now you're joining it. Well, now you're joining LG. It's okay. It's okay, little fella. Anyway, yeah, so, uh, I mean, it's this browser is pretty usable. Like, I can go to Amazon just fine. Order something. Now, just from this video so far, this is probably only, I've probably only been on this phone for about 15 minutes straight. And this phone was fully charged before this video, and it's already at halfway. This thing, the battery is not taking a good at. Like, it is so bad. Anyway, oh, ooh, this version of Amazon does not look great. I mean, it's only pulling up versions of these from 2016. Just how far we've come from 2016 is kind of shocking. Like, that was only four years ago. That's the problem with older devices. Heck, even using an iPhone 6 now is pretty hard because... The way the internet works now is constantly changing, which means even when a device that might be a couple of years old could be deemed unreliable just because of a stupid little thing, like different protocols being used. As you guys can see, like the Google app is also very old, but actually works a lot better than the newer one. Yeah, that's that's what's so interesting is that a lot of these older apps work better than the newer versions, and that's because they were a lot lighter, you know? Like, there's not many pictures, there's not many icons made inside the app. Like, that app right there was, like, 2 megabytes, as in now it would be 3, like, maybe 200 megabytes or something. Uh, that's probably too much. I'd say about 50. Going to 2 to 50 megabytes for something, for an app that does Google searches, is actually quite a quite a bit. Actually, I can tell you the exact amount of mine on my iPhone. Watch this. Just a Google app on an iPhone will cost this much storage. Is around 250 megabytes. Look at that. I said 250 even though it says 261 because documents and data is because of me, which is 8.3 megabytes. So I took off about 10. That's pretty bad if you ask me. Like, why is it that big for just simple searches? Back then, I, I actually think it was a lot simpler and a lot of things were better because of that. But you also had a lot less storage. Now the thing is about three different map, I like three different maps, like apps that do the same thing. That's kind of stupid. That's why Google actually made them all into one called Google Maps. So, whatever. I will try Instagram in part two, and I will show you what the camera is like in part two. But for now. I'm going to have to go ahead and close off this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe with the bell turned on. And don't forget to keep it lit. Peace.